Hello, and this is chapter 4. This chapter talks about very and very important concepts of the ROS. If you want to use the ROS very well, you should get a deep understanding in this chapter. We'll talk about some keywords in ROS and the structure. We also will learn what is message communication and how the communication could be carried out. After that, we will see about the name, the coordinate transformation client library, the communication between heterogeneous devices, and finally the structure of the ROS files and the folders. Let's start from ROS term definitions. There are many keywords to talk about the ROS system, but these three are most important elements in the ROS. The first is a node. The node is the smallest unit of executable processors. You can think of it as an executable function, and those will send or receive the data from each other. Guess a simple object detection progress. There is a camera, and you want to take a video, and finally, you will send it to somewhere that will detect the object in the video. In this case, a function that will send a video message, and a function that will get the data and process the detection can be programmed as executable and regarded as nodes in the raw system. Second is the package. It is something like a box that contains one or more nodes or the information for node execution. You can release what you made via a ROS package or you can also get some functions you want by downloading another ROS packages. The third is a message, a communication protocol for the nodes. The message has a data types like integer floating points. You can customize your message as well by mixing those standard messages together. There are four types of message communication, and we will learn three of them first. This is one of three, and it uses topic message. Topic is a simplex communication there are one publisher and one or more subscribers. You can think that the publisher is a node, and also the subscriber is a node. So this works continuously, very frequently. So this communication is mostly used in data transmission of the sensor, like the camera. Another type of communication uses the service message. Service is duplex communication, but it works only once. This has two sides, the server side and the client side. Server waits the request from the client, and if the client sends the request, the server sends response of the request, then the client will be stopped running. This communication is used sometimes in triggering the process or the process that needs to communicate only once, like give and take, the camera calibration data. The other type of communication uses the action message. You can think this as a mixture of topic and service message. Action is also duplex communication, and also has server and clients. But when the client side sends the request to the opponent, server continues sending the feedbacks until specific task is finished. This can be used in some task that needs feedback, like parking the robot. So we saw three communication methods in the ROS. And now we will dig more about how the communication runs in the ROS. In the previous chapter, we zoomed in the communication itself, but before the node communication, there are some procedures. We have executed the ROS core when we test the ROS installation. When you run the ROS core, it calls XML remote procedure and starts to manage the information of the nodes. When if you run a node that subscribes specific topic, the node gives its information to the ROS master. That includes the name of the node, the name of the topic, 
the type of the topping message and the port number. And after that, when you run the node, the publishes specific topic. It also gives its information to the Rust master. And if the topic of the two is matched, the Rust master gives the information of the publisher node. Then the subscriber node tries to connect with the publisher node. The publisher node responds to the connection request. And when the nodes are connected, the publisher node sends topping messages to the subscriber node. This will be done for all the topic communication, and this lasts until the connection is terminated. Service communication works as same as what is done in the topic communication, but works only once. Once the service communication was done, two nodes will be disconnected. Now, let's review the example we run in the previous chapter. We first run the ROS core. We run the total sim node, which is total simulation node, and this must be the subscriber node. We run the total teleop key, which is total teleoperation using the keyboard. This must be the publisher node. So we can imagine like this, the shape of how they communicate. Total teleoperation keyboard node converts the key input to the command bell message. And the total simulation node puts the data to the total on the screen. So we have get four messages. Actually, we didn't touch the parameter server in this chapter, but we heard about the editable parameter in previous chapter. This works as almost the same as the other communication, so we can put this together. Here shows some examples of frequently used messages. You can see by clicking these links. But we'll focus only on this example. Here the message that we use in the test was a twist from geometry messages package. The twists consist of two vector tree type members, the linear and the angular. These are named for the linear velocity and the angular velocity, and vector 3 is also a message of geometry messages. And the vector 3 message is consists of three members of float64 message. Those are meaning the velocity on each axis. As you can see, it can be customized by using the other messages. Now, let's have a look on the other elements. As you saw in the description of ROS communication, they use names of nodes and topics, the messages. All the elements in the ROS can be identified by the names. But let's suppose that if we're going to use same nodes of the same name, the following is how to differentiate their name and avoid to make the system being confused. You can change the node's name or the topic's name or even you can group the name and the topics so that you can divide the connected robot into specific namespace. This is a TF. If there is a joint base robot, each joints can be described in relative coordinate transformation. The forward or invert kinematics, for example, can be calculated their angles or the pose based on it. And the visualization program uses the TF data to visualize the robot's pose on the screen. We'll see the details later in chapter 10 and 13. ROS uses client library system and it supports various languages. The most used language in ROS 
is a C++ and a Python. You can check if the ROS supports your major programming language. Communication beyond the platform. We actually touched this feature before. And here's the example. You can download these examples via Android Market for free. If you have an Android smartphone, please try using it.